To God be the glory. I'm O.W. Prince, and this is your real illuminating moment. Welcome to part two of the eternal sign of God. James caught on the Gibbons in the book of Faith of Our Fathers, the 88th edition wrote, but you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. Stephen Keenan in the work entitled A Doctrinal Catechism, the third edition wrote, question, have you any other way of proving that the church has power to institute festivals or precepts? Answer. Had she not such power, she could not have done that which in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. John Locke's. I find it interesting and self-incriminating that the Catholic Church, out of whom Christianity arose, out of whom Christianity, Orthodox, and Protestantism were born, refers to itself in the feminine. Please reference Revelation 17, 3 through 18, and Revelation 18, 1 through 10. You'll find that the evil one, the Antichrist, that which might be referred to as the beast, is referred to in the feminine. It is called she. History reveals that it was decades after the death of the apostles that a political religious system renounced the Sabbath of the fourth commandments of Yahweh and substituted its observance for the first day of the week, Sunday. All Roman Catholic sources freely acknowledge that there is no scriptural authority for the observance of Sunday as a Sabbath and that it was the Roman Emperor Constantine and subsequently the Roman Catholic Church that changed the Sabbath to the first day of the week. The blasphemous words of the Roman Catholic Church reads, the Pope has the power to change time, to abrogate laws, and to dispense with all things, even the precepts of Christ. The Pope has the authority and often exercised it to dispense with the command of Christ. This can be found in the Ecclesiastical Dictionary. My brothers and sisters, let us be aware that the scriptures prophesied that this would happen. Please reference Daniel 7.25 and 11.36 where it speaks of the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit that opposes God and holiness in the way that the Catholic Church has done. It reads thus, He will speak words against the Most High and oppress the Holy Ones of the Most High. He will intend to change Yahweh's Sabbath days and laws and the Holy Ones, Yahweh's believers, will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. Uh, then kings referring to national powers, emperors, princes, popes, and presidents, beginning with Emperor Constantine, will do whatever they want. They will exalt and magnify themselves above God, above Yahweh, and they will say outrageous things against the sovereign Yahweh, and they will be successful in opposing Yahweh and perverting the faith until the time of wrath is completed, because what has been decreed and prophesied will be accomplished and come to pass. Pay attention, people. The time of wrath is being completed today. We are in the final days. The end time is already here. My brothers and sisters, it's time to repent. I'm O.W. Prince, and this has been our real illuminating moment with part two of the eternal sign of God. Please visit again to listen to part three of God's illuminating and eternal soul-saving truth. And as always in parting, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Life hurts, but God heals. Keep looking up.